Hi, and welcome to Solved and Unsolved Mysteries of the Bible. I'm Dick Baker, your teacher and your adventure guide. What uh, these are going to be about, it will be uh, things that I have discovered and run across in the Word of God that are mysteries that have been solved by digging a little deeper into the actual Word of God itself. Then th there will be also a bunch of the ones that are like Noah's Ark and the Ark of the Covenant and King Solomon's Mines are just a few. So we'll be investigating a lot of, of within Scripture and then a lot of things is where are they? out there, the physical things that have been lost, that uh, adventurers have gone and looked for them, and we'll see how far I can get you on these things. Today I have something really interesting, and I'll go back to that slide right now. This is the difference between man and animal in one word out of the Word of God. And there is some really neat, sim sim simple truth from the Word of God here that I think will bless you and equip you as a child of God. Uh, Genesis chapter 1 is the creation. Genesis chapter 2 is a retelling of creation, but with more detail. And so here we are in 2, and I'm in verse 19, and it's going to be talking about animals and birds, not man. But I will go to man next, but it's, it's earlier in chapter 2. So don't worry about the order. The order isn't important as to what God is doing in these verses. And I shall read. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And so we, we read the word formed and that God formed uh, out of the ground every beast of the field and every fowl of the air. But this verse is about and told that truth, but it is also about Adam naming and he called every living creature. So here's what we have in Genesis 2.19 that we just read. We read about the beasts or the animals and we read that they were formed and became living creatures. This is the Hebrew word for formed. So formed living creatures. Uh, the word formed is looks like that. Okay, now let's go on. Here's my next verse. And we're going back and looking at man because this is about the difference between man and animal. Uh, man is not an animal. Uh, man uh, is different than the animal kingdom. Uh, there is, of course, the, the bulk of the planet, the people of the planet, lost and some saved, should know better, but they hold on to evolution, if not totally, at least some, and that we just all came out of nothing, basically, and God had nothing or little to do with it. Some believe God created man or created in, and it's called theistic evolution, that God over billions of years just did a little token thing every million years or so. And that's not true. And so this knocks down the matter of evolution. There also, I am now, because the world is so evil, uh, and people that are on a world stage, not just America's stage, but on a world stage are basically saying with artificial intelligence, man, to, man would be no longer needed because man is who's responsible for all the problems that we're in. And they really are talking that, there would be, that artificial intelligence can run the earth without mankind, meaning man really is... They look at it as we're disposable, we're insignificant, we're problems. Um, we, have, we have no value in their eyes. They do, and I guarantee you that if they start wiping out the planet and the populations, they'll, they have found already a way that they can hide and that they can still stay. And an artificial intelligence will be, will be programmed to take care of them and not to harm them. 
All right, let's read the value of man or what God says about man. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils, nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So there's the word formed again. And now this time, we don't read about living creature, but a living soul. That's the difference. Animals and man both have a body and spirit, but only man has a soul. But where is that then? So in 2.7, we read about man. Man was formed and became a living soul. Here's the word formed again in Hebrew. And that is in the original language. That's not English. That's what Genesis was transcribed on by Moses. So let's put them together. On the left is man formed, the word formed, and on the right is ant, the animals formed, and there's the word formed. Pretty similar, aren't they? However, they are not. The creative difference between man and animal is, is the soul. Man is a living soul. He's an individual. Animals are living creatures. They're collectives. If I said to you, um, let's talk about elephants today. What had come into your mind would be just pictures of elephants. You, you would picture a collective. You wouldn't, you wouldn't specifically think of a family with a name that's set up household somewhere in a corner of, of, of a forest refuge or animal refuge in, in Kenya. But if I said, hey, let's go over to the Smiths and, have, and, and uh, invite them to come out and do this with us. All right, we're talking about individuals. We're talking about yous and me's and I's. So that's what is dry is that's what scripture is differentiating here. Man is a living soul, animals are living creatures. So the difference between the two words formed really matters. And this is the destroyer of evolution, period. And it's in one of those right there. You're looking at it, not the blue arrow, but what's right it's pointing to. That small thing, sort of in the center. So what in the world is that? It's a yod. It is a Hebrew letter of the alphabet, and it is the smallest letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Look at where it comes into play here. If you'll notice, there is one there is an uh, there is a yod added as the third letter of the word and you are really looking at the soul because everything else is identical but that's been added now what i didn't tell you was the letter this is the letter i and what it is talking about here and what di differentiates this from the animals and the birds and the fish and all other creation is that I am a creative, have been created by God. He is my maker. I have been called of God. I have purpose. God has a plan. I have, I have read in God's word and found God's plan for me. I am cared about. I have not been created and just left to live. I am important to God. And so as you look at that, you're looking at, you're looking at a living soul. You're looking at I. In this case, you'd be calling yourself I. I'd just have to say you. But both you and me, to get individually, we are individuals. We are one by one loved of God. And God wants his best in our lives. He wants us to know him. Jesus went and died on the cross for my sins, that I can be saved and have my sins forgiven, and I can go to heaven and be in heaven someday. That's the value of man. And God put that in there so that we wouldn't go on an ego trip and it's all about me, but we could see the value of myself 
ourselves, we could see that I am very important in the eyes of God. I hope that'll be a blessing and a help to you. I uh, want to encourage you to check out our, uh, I have hundreds of other videos on our playlist. And uh, they'll be, and check out the Solved and Unsolved Mysteries uh, playlist also. And you'll see as we go along here, uh, they will be added. And as we find new ones, we'll add them along the way also. So let's pray together and I'll say thank you and uh, God bless. Lord, you are so wonderful and we are important. Every single human is a creation from you and of you. We are important. You love us. You sent your son Jesus to die for us, even though we were far and from God and sinners by birth. We thank you, Lord, that we are important in your eyes. I pray this would encourage anyone listening that's, that's just going through some rough times and wondering where God is. Lord, reveal yourself to them. Let them know that you're loved, you're important, that you have a plan, a purpose. You have reasons for what, what, they, what everything happens in our lives. And Lord, we love you and thank you that you love us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.